Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is a really exciting video. It's one I've been looking forward to sharing for a long time. For those of you who follow my social media activities, you will realize we're on a journey as a business into the renewables industry. So we're getting involved with solar and battery storage. We've got lots of questions ourselves that we've asked to other installers out there in industry along our learning journeys. And I've tried to put as much of that into this video as I can. So I'm going to split this install down into two separate bits of content on YouTube. So we're going to have the roof works in a later video, looking at the hooks and putting the panels up there. And in this one, we're going to focus in on the hybrid inverter, the battery storage system, and working with the existing electrical install within this property. We're going to have a bit of a deep dive on DC isolators because it's something that's resurfaced again on social media. I'm going to give my views on that. It's a topic that's raised for a long, long time. If you search back in some of the electricians forums from 2010 and even prior to that, there's been chat about DC isolators built into inverters and if we need external DC isolation points because of that. And also discussion around up to a thousand volts sometimes that are in the strings, the electricity at work raised 1989, ongoing maintenance and all of that good stuff. So we're going to get into it. We're going to jump out to site. Please do get involved in the comments if you've got any thoughts or opinions. All feedback is welcomed. Let's get to it. So you can see we're working from an old 16th edition Legrand board. So you can see we've got the... AC, RCD over there that's looking after the cooker and the sockets. And over on the other side, we've got the heating, lights and smoke alarms. Typical setup for a 16th edition board. It's plastic. There is some spare ways in there. So we're going to try and repurpose this for what we are doing. And we'll speak about that later on because obviously there's some considerations around SPDs and such. But we'll get to that when we tackle that particular part of this job. See, we've got our isolating switch here. So with the, the solar system, you're supposed to have an isolation point for somebody to come and work on this consumer unit where they can turn it off and know that there's no energy from any of this lot coming into your consumer unit. Now we do also have an isolator down there which is in reasonably close proximity to this. There'll obviously be a schematic left with it. I know some people just fit the single um, isolating switch for the whole system. We've gone for two. I just thought it, made it makes it really obvious if we mark next to there, solar PV generation on roof, isolation point, then there's no danger to um, a home, homeowner or anybody else who might not be a fair with how these things do actually isolate. We've then got the, the AC, so the AC side comes out of here once we've wired it into this isolating switch. It drops down, it comes into this generation meter, we then come out of the generation meter into another AC isolator and that then powers up and into the inverter. So the strings, you see we've already got our cable through to, well we haven't, we've got our duct in through to outside, so we've ducted through the cavity, inside to out, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but it's on a downwards trajectory as well, so any water that could ever get into there is going to go out, we're obviously going to seal up the inside and the outside of that, but the strings are going to come in, run down this trunk in, they're going to come and drop down into the SPD enclosure, I'll show you that when we've got to that stage. We've got our DC isolators, which is going to turn the power off from the solar panels, or cut it off if you like so then the output from this DC isolator would carry no voltage to the SPDs and to the inverter. So anybody coming along to replace this there's going to be no DC um, energy off the solar panels. If you isolate these two switches here there'll also be no AC and then we've got the system that's safe to mess about with and work on. We've also got our um, SPDs down here as I said they're going into the enclosure and they can be worked on safely as well. Now Underneath the inverter, just to show you exactly what we've got, we've got the two strings. So one string comes in here, I'll show you up on the underneath of this Solax inverter. You can see there's two pairs of strings, if that's focused. We've then got our battery connections. We've got the data dongle. We've got our CT, which is on there, into the comms port. And then we've got our main power unit, which also allows for connection to um, an ESP point. So if we want, we can take sockets off here that will run off grid. We're not doing that on this install, but it does have the option to do that. So that's kind of where we're at. Um, our battery down here, and there's isolators in the top of this as well for turning it on and off. There's a disconnection point and isolation around the back, so you can turn the power off to the DC outputs up and into the inverter, but they're glanded into the trunking. They come up, off and away, and into the inverter. We'll show all this when it's powered up and working as well, obviously, but just to give you a feel for how it's all cabled together, 
once I've got these adjusted for the SPD, I'll jump back on and show you that as well. We've also got a main earth that runs off into this consumer unit. It drops down and connects onto the battery earth post. And then we've got our earth feeds running through the isolators as well. So we need to take an earth into those. And then we need an earth connection onto the end of the isolator, as well, onto the inverter as well. I believe that is if you're going to set it up so it can run in islanding mode when you'd have an earth rod. We've checked the earth connection on this incoming post here because obviously there's an earth connection running through from our isolator switch on the flex up into it and it does have continuity to this point here so I don't think there's any purpose in joining another earth lead into the end of the inverter there. I need to double check in the instruction manual but I think that's if you were going to fit an earth rod outside there is a point for it to be connected onto the inverter so that's my view on that one and again that's if you were to use it in islanding mode so i'm going to get on now with mounting these spds i'll discuss that in a second and we'll move on with the video so we're going to get on with mounting the spds underneath the inverter now so we've got this trunk in here we've got our dc isolators i want to put the spds directly underneath and line them up in relation to the dc isolator that is applicable to them obviously we need to make sure the dc isolator turns off power from the strings into the inverter but also into the SPDs so anyone who's coming along later to do maintenance on these can have a safe way of working. There is the debate and discussion around DC isolators built into inverters. My view is you need those isolators external to that. Basic principles are if you've got a, a live cable that's left flapping in the air however it may be isolated from the energy in the way it disconnects from the inverter itself it's still poor practice in my opinion it's easily avoided and when you've got things like spds that you need to be working on you need a point of isolation for them anyway regardless of any of that you could come to a stage where a consumer is considering swapping out the inverter it's an appliance at the end of the day all of the wires have plugs on the end of them so it should be a simple case of plugging and out if they're doing that with a live voltage on the end of that cable you know is that a safe system of work for them as unskilled people I don't think so, so my view is you have the DC isolators separate to the inverter regardless. But this is obviously an old style consumer unit, insulated version. So we've got what was a neutral bar and an earth bar. There's the main switch here that I've, I've taken out. But we do have the six spare ways. So the idea is that's going to mount under the trunk in there. We're going to have the two SPDs inside it. I need to adjust the wiring because at the moment, as you'll see, the inverter wiring loops into the output of these DC isolators. But we obviously need to connect the SPDs in parallel to all that. So I'm going to get on with that now. I'll leave it on a little recording time lapse so you can see how I do it. And I'll jump back with you when we've got to that stage. So you can see behind me, I'm on with wiring up the SPDs. And we'll have a run through that in a minute. But I just wanted to show you the DC cabling because it was something I'd wondered about when we first started getting into solar. What the cables actually like to work with and how you would strip it. So I've got the red and the black legs here brought the red in because it's easier to see that it is actually double insulated it's a really um, tough um, insulation on both skins so it's not like an outer sheath and then an inner insulation this is actually proper double, in double insulated so with the red you can see because it's got the black inner insulation I don't know how that's coming up on camera whereas with the black one it's harder to spot it because it's, it's all just black but I thought I'd run through some of the options you've got when you come to strip this obviously we've got the traditional methods of using a set of croppers so i'll just demonstrate that one on here similar principle to how you'd st strip a flexible cable on an ac system so you just get your croppers scar around the edge and then fire away so you can see there that stripped it pretty well i've not marked any of the inner conductors so they're all still intact there's none of the stray bits of flexible cable stripped off but as you can see it is a flexible cable so then I thought, in terms of repetition, when you're working inside a, a DC isolate, for example, space is sometimes a bit tight, it can be a bit difficult to get your croppers in and, and work nicely. So that got me thinking about trying some of the automatic wire strippers. So I got these ones from Klein, by the majors, use them on AC systems all the time, um, really good for downlights. But I wondered if it had stripped the double insulation properly. So just to spin us around and we'll see if we can take the end off with these. You can see it quite happily does. It's stripped that reasonably nicely. Obviously, you can set your depth. I've just done that pretty rough there. But you've got the age-old problem with using these where you get marks on the outer sheath of the cable itself. And obviously, we're ferruling the ends of these up, so it's no great dramas. Um, but then I remembered when I went on the eFix Live show, Gordon and Gary had a new solar stripping tool that I actually had a go with 
on set and I thought it was really good so I've got one of these again I think um, Mr Cato ordered one of these while we were on the live so Stuart's been helping me out loads with getting sorted on, on Solar I thought I'd give these a go I've been asked him if they were any good with him being a bit of the way into using them um, and yeah they're spot on so these will do your 1.5 and 2.5s on on one side of the tool and then you've got your 4 to 6 mil on the other and obviously this is the 4 to 6 mil range so you simply set your depth this little black cog here adjusts up and down so you can change the depth that you're actually stripping. Pop your tool in, give it a little twist like you would with your Nipex Ergo strips and then simply pull away and you get a really clean cut. I've used this on all of those behind me there. It's not marked an inner cable whatsoever. That was my concern that you can get a bit carried away, maybe start scoring some of the flex on the inside. But it's not been the case. You get a really nice, neat, clean cut. And I'll speak about why that's been important inside the DC isolators up there because I've done something a little bit different with those. But we'll go in closer and have a look because I'm not sure if I'm going to leave it like that. I'm going to ask some of my solar friends on um, the world of social media what they think to my ideas. So we have to just how we've wired down into these SPDs. Let's take you in closer and have a look at that. Actually, before we go in close, I thought I'd show you what I'd done on the end of these DC wires because I don't want to undo the isolators anymore now I've got them in. But you can see I've... Um, put a pin crimp on the end so these aren't insulated ferrule crimps they're pin ferrule crimps so they're a little bit different you don't get a, an outer jacket and the reason was when I've gone into the DC isolators I didn't want the extra bulk on the cables as I'm making the terminations I wanted a nice slim cable so I can get it in there and I'll explain why when we go in a bit closer and have a look so you can see in here why I have actually um, just put the pin crimp on the end and not the insulated ferrule boot and that is to get them into the terminals on the bottom of the DC isolator. Now I viewed this as a similar way of connecting as you would inside a consumer unit for example on your RCD with a cage clamp where you could loop out to a couple of other RCDs. You all know what I mean with the neutral fly leads where they link across. Same with the lines where you come out the main switch and it will drop into the top of the RCDs as it moved along. I looked at it like that. Usually out on an isolator you would just want one cable into each termination so I've got that in the back of my mind as well. I'm going to ask some of the solar guys who are more experienced in this if that is an acceptable way to, to terminate these. But it's a sound and solid connection. The cables are in the bottom there nice and comfortably. They're all sat inside the, the cage clamp and um, you know they're secure. They've got a good electrical connection. So obviously there's a quite a bit of load through these. So we don't want a weak point in the system. But the reason I've done that is otherwise we'd still have to break the cables out inside here anyway using a Wago connector for example. It's just more connections. I was trying to reduce those I thought it was a better application in my own engineering mind that was just what I thought would be a better way of doing it might end up being wrong but we'll share it on the channel anyway so you can see the learning journey that I'm going on but if you imagine otherwise we'd have one cable coming out of this DC isolator drop down into here we'd have one of the Wago three port connection points so we'd feed it into that we'd then loop out of that Wago into the positive side of the SPD and then we'd loop out of the bottom of the Wago again and go up into the inverter itself that way you've got the isolator here when you turn it into the off position kills power down to this Wago so you're not going to get any power into the SPD and you're not going to get any power into the inverter it stops at this isolation point so that's the other way of setting it up now obviously if I'm doing that and this is the reason I've, I've changed away from doing that because I was going to go down that road myself to start with is there's not enough room to get the Wagos in I'd need four of them and we just don't have the space with all the cables at the side so I'd have to get a bigger enclosure um, which isn't a great hardship, I can do that. Uh, but I just thought for the minute I'd set it up like this and demonstrate exactly what I mean to some of the solar experts, see what they think. I don't think there's anything especially wrong with it other than perhaps you're not supposed to have two cables in a terminal and isolate a switch. Um, but I, you know, same as I said, when you're thinking of RCDs on split loads boards, it's been done for a long, long time. Anyway, waffling a bit on that, I just thought I'd point it out. We've got the Surge um, DC surges in there. So these are the SPD PV600s and they're from surge protection devices these are for each string so we've got one string coming into these another string coming into there they sit in parallel so the string doesn't run through into the um, spd and then back out into the system they're just kind of tapped off as you would have in an ac system you still need to bring an earth down so you can see i've brought that earth which is going to go off into the consumer unit up there when we get around to that and then we've got the two earth links into the top of the spds as well these are all labelled up. I've put flags on everything. I don't know if you can see in the back there, but all the positive and negative legs are flagged. The CP, sorry, the earths are flagged. Same in the isolators. Everything's got flags on it. My thinking on that was if anybody comes to work on this and they're removing cables from isolators and things, 
it's an easy way for them to identify what it is. I didn't have any big enough heat shrink to go over them. We do usually use the heat shrink um, IDs, but I didn't have any to fit over this size conductors. So we've just put flags around. Everything's well labeled. We've got labels inside the isolators as well with the old marker pen. Obviously this when it gets its front cover on is gonna be labeled up as well. So I think we're good to go on that front. Matt is outside now, putting the conduit on the wall. So you can see through the wall there, we've got some conduit through. I wasn't sure if it was polystyrene insulation in there. Might have already mentioned that. So it's popped a bit of tube through. That way we're covering the cable from any potential damage. We've got this existing board, as I've mentioned before. We've got some Legrand breakers, an SPD and an RCBO. We'll talk about all that because we're going to try and make use of this if we can without replacing it. If we have to, it's no great deal. We can swap that to an 18th edition board of SPD and everything. But I thought it'd be a nice demonstration to show how making your own system comply you don't necessarily have to upgrade the consumer unit or fit an additional one. There's ways to work with existing equipment and comply with all the relevant regulations. And we'll show that through the course of this video. We're nearly at the stage now where we can button all this up, talk the terminals down, put the trunking covers on, and then start working on the AC side. We'll jump back onto the video and we're at that stage. And I'll show you a bit of what Matthew's up to outside in just a sec. So it's a bit windy out here, so I'm not going to film for too long, but you see we've got the conduit on the outside that's going to run up the outside of the building into the loft. There's loads of pipe back here already anyway, so we're not that fussed about adding another conduit. Might just pop in the ladders up to the next door, he's going to ask the neighbour, so we've got the triple extenders going up. And when we get into the loft, I'll show you that. Of course the solar panels have been on this elevation of the property, so we need to take our feed up in the conduit there, through the conduit in the loft to a point that makes sense for them wire out to the panels. It's a bit windy down here, so I'll take you back inside. You can see inside the existing consumer unit, we've tried to adjust and make do with what's here. We've got our SPD in there. It's tapped off and overcurrent protected devices it needs. We've also got our Type A RCBO in there for the hybrid inverter and battery storage system. It was a bit of a mess inside the existing board, but it is what it is. It's all soundly electrically connected and we've complied with the relevant regulations for the equipment we're installing. So you can see we're done, we're on the wall now, we've got the inverter all buttoned up, we've got the DC isolators, the inverter isolator, generation meter, DC SPDs on the old strings, battery storage down the bottom, and then we've um, connected up our AC into the consumer unit as well. Not powered up at the minute, I'll take you through it, I'll jump off the tripod and run you through how this works from start to finish in terms of the way the voltage and current is flowing, and then we'll pick up with some commissioning. So this is the consumer unit all wired up. You can see we've got our SPD in there. So that's the type two and three from surge protection devices. We've got the B32 breaker protecting that. And that's off the main switch side of this old 16th edition board. We've then got our 32 amp um, RCBO in the board. So again, that's type A, ready to feed into the inverter. And that comes through this main switch here at the side of the consumer unit. So anyone who's working on there can isolate and know that there's nothing back feeding into the system. Drops down into the meter, into the AC isolator for the inverter, powers the inverter, and then the inverter has the DC strings off the roof connected into it through these two here. So we've got one string going in one side, another string in the other side, and then in parallel to that, the um, DC SPDs. And again, if you isolate these, it turns off the inverter and the SPD so you can work on it. Down the bottom, we've got the battery storage. That's all in there, ready to go and cabled up. Nicely into the trunking, as you can see with the glands, runs up the trunking and then into the bottom of the inverter as well. So that's us, done and dusted for now. We'll jump back with some commissioning. So we've got the Solax inverter on and working. These are really simple in how they operate. It's hard to show you because we've got um, bad lighting in here anyway. But if we zoom into the menu, you can see at the minute it's drawing about 100 watts there's not a lot on in the property um, you can go into the menu system and it's pretty straightforward you get your system status historical data about and in the advanced section so in the settings by default it's just four zeros and you can change your date your language if you want to mute the EPS um, put it in a self-use mode so you can change it away from um, its operation if you want to be in a backup mode and all these other settings but pretty basic in terms of how that all works. Uh, your work mode, so you can see here we're in self-use, so this is where it's going to try and use as much of the generation off the roof, make use of the battery before it would draw from the grid. Obviously you can adjust this um, to whatever option you want, so we can go for manual if you want to adjust it in a manual operation. 
So you can see you can go into manual or you can adjust it into a backup mode, feed in priority or self use as we was on already. So we'll keep it in the self use option. Looking around the system as a whole, obviously we see our batteries at 44%. At the minute we haven't popped any of the solar on the roof, so we can't demonstrate that. We've got the battery here, it's status on, it's working. You've got a little flashing the LEDs on the front to show it's got about 50% capacity, all nicely landed into the trunk in there. We've got our SPDs, that's all labeled up in the little Proteus board. And you can see there, they're all green flagged. So there's been no lightning strikes in our bare cables. We've got the string switched off at the minute. They're all labeled as well, so put the labels on there. The solar uh, PV system AC isolator, that's for the inverter. We've got our inverter label on there. All this has come from midsummer, by the way. Fantastic supply, we'll speak about that in a minute. We've got our generation meter, which is currently reading. Um, on no generation, because it's not generating. And then we've got our main system isolator up here. Labels on the trunking to show that there is um, live cables in there on the solar system. We're popping more of those on. You see we've got this nice trunking all the way up to the top and a little side piece across there. I thought that was the neatest way. We could have stopped at the top of that switch, but I just thought it looked a bit odd. So we've taken it all the way to the top and then we've got our DC surges at this end and we'll look after the strings later on. The Solax dongle on the bottom, that's where you would connect everything through the app. We'll have a look at the app in a minute. You can see we've left generous loops of cable underneath that's in case there's ever an issue and these need re-terminating there is a bit there for somebody else to play with it's one of those where you want to leave it neat and tidy so there doesn't look to be i know of a, a rat's nest of cables underneath but also you want it so there's a bit of something there for the next person coming along to work with and we've tried to do that this is the earth bond on the inverter so i was saying earlier I was in two minds whether to fit that we do actually have to put it on there so we pop that on and that's duplicated down at the battery as well I'll open up the app and show you that um, on my phone. And again, for those of you who are familiar with these kind of things, it's pretty similar to all of the other apps that are out there for these, you know, EV chargers and your solar system. So we can see what the AC is doing, what the battery is doing, and the grid. So at the minute, we're drawing from the battery 91 watts, and that's going into um, the house through the inverter for the power to be drawn down. Obviously, once the grid's generating, it's a lovely sunny day outside, sorry, PV, um, you'll see that flowing off the panels as well, into the house and into the battery, and hopefully that grid stays at, at zero. So that's kind of where we're at with the system at present. Say we're going to go onto the roof now and get the solar. We'll close this one up. I'll run through the instruction manual and just show you a bit of what they give us as well, and we'll have a chat in a sec. So before we end this one, I just wanted to run through the manuals with this Solax gear. You do get quite good instruction sets, often a worry with things that are coming from abroad and some of the manuals that we're used to finding with some products here and there. But these are really good, so you get a quick start um, installation guide for both the battery and the inverter itself. So there's these handy little pamphlets if you just need to quickly refer back to something if you're um, a familiar installer. But we was working from these thicker instruction books, so this is for the the triple power battery and then the Solax inverter and these are really detailed these are all English so there's no mix up of language and this is just a few pages we've got a really detailed um, installation guide here so everything you need to know even down to how the MC4 leads are made off it's all in there the battery leads the same so if you're needing to figure out how you crimp together those battery leads into what looks like the MC4 connectors. Again, all in the manual, in all in the manual. All the commissioning's in there as well, so every single step of the way, this is in these books, which is brilliant, so that's really good. And it brings me back to the midsummer um, wholesaler we've used for this solar system. There's the PV builder that they have through their website as well, where you can go off and design your whole solar system on there. Helps with your G99 applications, it gives you the schematic of the install as well. All of the components down to the very last bracket on the roof can be drawn into the order form as well. So you can select your solar panels in the PV design tool. You can choose the rail system you're using, if that's in roof or on roof. You can select your inverters and your battery backups. It then takes you through to choose any AC isolators you might need, your DC isolators, your meters, your sticker packs. Everything's all in there. And then it takes you straight into the um, midsummer website and puts it in your basket so everything you need is in there it's so simple and you place your order it comes on a pallet and you've got that whole site installed together with one simple process started in that pv 
building tool. So if you're not using that already, go and check it out because I found that really helpful. Obviously, we're new to PV, so knowing that we've got every last component, even down to the screws to fix the um, hooks onto the roof, they're all in the kit, so it's brilliant. Um, go and check it out. We're going to leave that one here for this one. The next time we come back to this, we'll cover putting the panels on the roof. I've tried to break this down into two separate videos. So in this one, we've gone through the battery backup, the inverter, and the um, AC side connecting into the existing consumer unit. And um, any questions, drop them in below. We'll see you on the next one.